Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 19 from Las Vegas. This is our third day of covering the event. Lots of conversations, two CUBE sets. As John would say, a canon of CUBE content. Lisa Martin here with my esteemed colleague, Justin. Um, and Justin and I have a couple of guests joining us. We've got to my left, Tejas Bandarkar, head of product for Freshworks Inc. And Broughton Saha, VP and GM of Machine Learning Services from Amazon. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be so here. You still have voices, which is very impressive after three days. Yes, it takes a lot of practice. It does, or hiding out in quiet areas, right? So Tejas, Freshworks Inc. I, snooping on the website, Justin and I were talking before we went live. You guys have 150,000 businesses That's using right. your technologies. I hadn't heard of Freshworks. But it looks like it's about customer relationship management, customer experience. Tell our audience a little bit about what Freshworks is and sure. the technologies that you deliver. Good. So we were founded in, uh, back in 2010. We were born in the cloud, in the AWS cloud. Uh, and we started off as a uh, customer support uh, application and we have grown on to now in deliver a suite of customer engagement applications that include marketing and automation capabilities, CRM, uh, customer support and, and customer success. And so what we uh, really uh, are looking after is, is to deliver uh, value across the entire customer journey uh, you know, of that. So there's been some big legacy CRMs around for a long time. What was the market opportunity back in 2010 that Freshworks folks saw, there's a gap here, we need to fill it? Sure. We, well we, uh, like any other startup, we decided to focus in one place, and our focus uh, uh, was really around SMBs. We felt like SMBs were underserved, and uh, we felt like as rich as the technology is and the experiences have become, uh, we felt like we needed to democratize access to that. And because SMBs tended to have fewer resources and maybe uh, in some cases weren't as tech savvy, uh, we felt like they were kind of getting left behind. And so we wanted to step in there and make them whole and kind of offer them the same set of richness that you would expect you know, for a large enterprise customer to have. And for that, actually working in conjunction with AWS has been super important for us because we have really been able to, to uh, deliver on that promise. Yeah. So Bratton, maybe you can uh, tell us a bit about the relationship between yourselves and Freshworks. Um, I believe Freshworks is built completely on AWS stack and, and always has been. Yeah. So how did that relationship begin and, and how has that grown as, as Freshworks has grown into, into this massive company that you've, you've become? Yeah, so um, Freshworks got off on AWS, and then when we launched SageMaker, and as you know, we have several tens of thousands of customers today doing the machine learning on AWS and on SageMaker, what customers have seen is that they get significant benefits in terms of features and developer productivity and lower cost of ownership. And Freshworks, saw that they could reduce their time to getting the models out by an order of magnitude. And Tejas was saying, for example, that they used to take a couple of days to get their models out to production, and by using SageMaker, they were able to get it down to a couple of hours. And we have seen this happen with many other customers. Intuit, for example, got down from six months to about a week. And just because of the productivity, performance, and cost benefits that SageMaker provides, we have seen Tejas, Freshworks, and many other companies, many other customers move over to AWS for the machine learning. I think. And Tejas, what are you using this machine learning to do? So you, you have all of these different models, and sure. we were talking a little bit before we went live about how you, how you use different models for different customers, but what, what are those models actually used to do? What, what service do they provide? Right. So as you know, we have a set of these applications which are built around functional use cases. Yep. And so if you take a given customer, they might have multiple products from us and they might be doing multiple different use cases on us. And so you can quickly think of this as being, you know, maybe three to five specific use cases that require you know, machine learning you know, assistance. Uh, and so as a result, as we scale this up to our entire uh, set of customers, we now literally have thousands and thousands of these ML models that we have built addressed uh, geared to addressing specific 
pain points of that particular customer, right? So it's all about catering the ML model for a specific use in a specific context. And then it's not only just about building it, uh, which you know, obviously SageMaker does a, you know, a great job of helping us do that, but it's also about maintaining it over time and making sure that it stays relevant and fresh and so on. And again, working with AWS has been instrumental in for us to kind of stay ahead of that curve and make sure that we're continuing to drive accuracy and scale and simplicity into, uh, into, you know, into those particular use cases for customers. See? And you know, we released many features this year that makes this important. So one of the things that we have as part of SageMaker Studio is a SageMaker model monitor that automatically monitors predictions and allows a customer to say when are those predictions not being of the appropriate quality and then can send in alarms. So we are really building SageMaker out as a machine learning platform that takes care all of the undifferentiated heavy lifting so that customers can really focus on what they need to do to build a model, train the model, and deploy the model. So in terms of your users, you mentioned, Tejas, that the, the gap in the market back in 2010 was the small, the SMB space that probably something like a Salesforce or an Oracle was possibly too complex for an SMB. But now we're talking about emerging technologies, machine learning, AI. What is the appetite for the small, are you dealing with, I guess my question is, a lot of SMBs that are born in the cloud companies, so smaller, more agile, more willing, to understand and embrace technology versus legacy SMBs that might be, I don't want to say technology averse, but not born within it? Yeah, so, so we, uh, we run through the entire gamut. So we obviously have uh, you know, Silicon Valley based startups, we have more traditional companies around travel and hospitality and real estate and other, other verticals. Uh, and what we have really, really seen, the commonality has been is that uh, as good as the technology has become for AI and ML, uh, there is still some disparity in how people are able to consume it, right? And if you have a lot of resources, a lot of skilled engineers, it, it is very easy for you to do that, thanks to all of the capabilities that are delivered by AWS. But in the other cases, uh, they do require more hand-holding, specifically for those use cases that really impact them. Like, how do I you know, reduce my churn amongst customers? How do I maximize the chances of closing a deal? How do I make sure that the marketing campaign I run delivers on all of the, the, the objectives that I have, right? So all of those things, they, re, they need help. And so we are in there to kind of simplify that for them and leveraging all of the underlying technologies from AWS, we're able to deliver that together. And going in from the beginning, all in on AWS, when AWS was only about four years old or so, right, back in 2010, um, Talk to me about the opportunities that that has opened up for Freshworks to evolve. You now offer a suite of different solutions. Talk to us about uh, Amazon and AWS's evolution and how quickly that they're evolving and developing new products and services right. as like fuel for Freshworks business. Yeah, so really the big focus that we have always had is to deliver the right experiences that really impact end users for those particular functional use cases around marketing, sales, uh, support, and customer success, right? So, as part of that, while we are focusing on, on that experience, we also need to be focusing on delivering all of these services at scale, right? And with all the right security built in and all the right uh, other you know, tool set that, that's built in. And so, so, the synergy that we have found with, between us and AWS is that we're able to rely uh, on all of the right things for AWS to deliver upon. So, they are also all about offering simple APIs, about making things scalable right from the get-go, about being extremely cost-effective, about uh, continuing to drive innovation. And these are all the th things that drive us as well for our customers. And so it's been a very complementary partnership from that respect, is you know, we kind of like go on this journey together. And you know, customer obsession is a key leadership principle. And so everything we do at AWS is really working back from the customer and making sure that we are really addressing all of the pain points and making them successful. Well, because customer experience is a deal, can be a deal breaker for companies, right? You think of, you have a problem with your ISP and you call in, or you go through social media or um, a chat bot, and if you can't get that problem resolved, as a consumer you have so much choice yeah. to go to another vendor who might be able to better meet your needs or have the, use the data to make sure they already know what's the problem. It's the same thing in the CRM space, right? If businesses don't have the right 
technologies to use the data to really know their customers and those customers churn. Absolutely. And so it's really, we see CX as a driving force in any industry, that if you can't get that right, customers are going to go, I'm going to go somewhere else, yeah. because I have that choice. Yes, I mean, customer expectations, as you said, have risen. Customer impatience with bad experiences gone down, and one of the things that we have really focused on is, as we go through this entire journey, we collect the data of that customer's journey, and we learn from it, and we're able to visualize that for the salesperson or the, the tech support person who's actually working with that customer, so they can actually see the journey of that customer. They visited the pricing page a couple of times, maybe they're interested to make a purchase, or they visited the uh, cancellation policy page, okay, maybe I need to do something about that, right? right? And, and so, that has really been instrumental kind of in success. You know, success. And you know, what we are doing at AWS and with SageMaker is making sure that all our customers get access to this technology. And that is where we start with, how do we make machine learning accessible to all developers, so that all of the experience that we have gained at Amazon from investing in machine learning for the last 20 years, we take all of those learnings and make it available to our customers so they can apply machine learning for transforming their businesses. Yep, and that's exactly what it can be is transformational. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining Justin Pleasure. and me on the program, talking to us about Freshworks, what you guys are doing with Amazon, and the opportunity to really dial up that CX experience with machine learning. We appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you very much. much. All right, yeah. for my co-host Justin Warren, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE from AWS reInvent 19 from Vegas. Thanks for watching. <laughs>